All right, let's see if I can remember how to do this. What have you missed? We're in a new house and I have a new haircut. <laughs> and that's it, you're, you're caught up now. Happy new year. Silly Gooses, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. Sorry I disappeared on you. It's been a, it's been a wild couple of months, really. Uh, last year really overall took me for a ride. I'm also standing, which means that you can't see Sunday. Let me grab her. Come here. People wanna see you. Oh, here she is. <laughs> she says hi. She hates me. <laughs> But I'm really, really excited to be back to making videos <laughs> in a new space. Had some time, you know, away out of the routine for a while and I'm excited to come back to it. I have really, really missed it so much. What better way to come out of retirement than with the January book tag created by my wonderful, genius, lovely friend, Jan Agaton, who even was kind enough to tag me in her video, even though you know I was gonna do it anyway. But thank you, thank you for that. It was the push that I needed. <laughs> so a couple years ago, Jan created this tag as like a start of your year goals video, where we have the mid-year book tag, we have the end of your book tag, and now we have a beginning of your book tag. Like it just feels right, you know, really completes the holy trinity. So thanks for that, Jan. <laughs> I was gonna film this yesterday and then I realized I had not done any prep and I was not gonna put you through my rambling, uh, fresh back to the camera after three months and putting together a video with no notes. So instead I wrote my notes yesterday and now here we are. Let's see what we got here. January book tag number one your last read of 2023 and your first read of 2023, if you remember it. Um, my last read of the year, where's my pile? My last read of last year was, so this is Ever After by F.T. Lukens, which is a young adult adventure cozy fantasy. Uh, this was the second book by this author that I've read now and have loved now. F.T. Lukens just is such a perfect, like reading slump, a curer, ender for me. <laughs> this is now the author that I will reach for anytime I'm in a slump because this, it just really scratched an itch. Um, the way that I would describe this is like if, if you enjoyed Legends and Lattes but wished that there was a little bit more plot and a little bit more romantic pining, I think you'd really like this. It felt very cozy to me. It felt somewhat low stakes. There are still some stakes. There is great um, will they, won't they, oh my gosh, just talk to each other kind of romance pining going on. Basically, the very first page of this book, the um, like chosen one of the adventure party chops off the head of the big bad guy that they've supposedly been questing towards for the last year of their lives. And then after that on page one, when like, now their big adventure quest is over. They're looking at each other like, well, now what? Like the prophecy has been fulfilled and now we just have to like live our lives. <laughs> so it was really fun about like what happens to this like very archetypal group of like D&D &D characters um, after they finish the quest. I really, really enjoyed it. This was a perfect end of year read for me. I think I gave this four stars. And my first read of last year was Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. Um, this actually is a signed arc that she sent me because I randomly won her giveaway on Instagram. So she sent it to me, said, Noelle, happy holidays, <laughs> and signed this arc for me and now this is like such a treasure of mine. This was my first read of 2023. This is a sapphic like holiday cozy romance. Maybe not cozy, it's just like a normal romance, but holiday romances always feel cozy to me. It was a cozy read, but that doesn't mean it's a, Never mind, you get it. Oh my God, I am rusty. I am, I am rusty. rusty. Anyway. Anyway. This was an easy five star read. Alison Cochran is now an auto buy, very hype author for me. Um, and we'll get more to that in a, in a minute. But if you need like a snowy, good, sapphic, Christmassy time, 
Strongly recommend. Can't recommend highly enough. Number two is what is your first read of 2024? And we're going to continue our romance train because my first read of this year will end up being Wildfire by, Wildfire by Hannah Grace, which is the second book after Icebreaker, um, which I read over the summer and completely took me by surprise that I really, really loved this as much as I did. Pretty spicy college hockey romance. But oh my god, like Icebreaker just really did it for me. So I read the wintry one in the summer, and now I'm reading the summery one in the winter. So that's just, it. it's kind of like upside down day, I guess. This follows a different young man on the same college hockey team, and he goes to work at this like sleepaway camp as a counselor over the summer. And the like college girl that he slept with as like a one night stand also shows up as a counselor there. And now they have to work together over the summer as camp counselors when they have a no romance, no fraternization rule to work at the camp. So it's kind of like a, you know, if you tell 20 year old kids that they're not allowed to do something like that's just obviously they're going to do that. So it's been fun so far. I'm almost done with this. I'll probably finish this tonight. Hannah Grace has the third one of these coming out this year and it's an equally beautiful cover and I'm equally as excited about it. I think that Wildfire is probably headed towards a four or five stars too. In general, Hannah Grace was a big surprise for me last year and I'm excited to keep reading from them. Okay, <laughs> number three is to share three of your reading goals for this year. So um, as we'll talk about in a second, I, I didn't do super hot on my reading goals for last year. So I'm going light and low stakes <laughs> for 2024. The first one, probably the one that's most important to me is that I, I really need to trim down my owned TBR. And I know that everyone feels that way and everyone says that. So I know that, you know, I'm not alone. Take it with a grain of salt, but I recently, just last year did this whole TBR unhaul of my TBR cart and some other like unread books I had lying around and it's already out of control again. Like I'm looking at the unshelved books because obviously I uh, I just moved in. There will be more bookshelves here. This is barely organized enough to be in frame. Um, the other shelves outside of this frame are still chaos just so you know. So I'm just looking at stacks of books that are unread. I don't like owning that many unread books because I specifically like to keep them separate. I don't know why I am like this, but I prefer to have my read books shelved separately from my unread books. And um, right now I just, to me, feel like I have too many unread books to be accumulating more at the rate that I have been. <laughs> All of that to say that my loose goal, really more of a intention, if you will, is that for every book I bring in new to my house, I need to be reading three physical books off of my unread TBR. So one in to the TBR cart means three out of my TBR cart. Um, whether I read them and shelve them or read them and unhaul them or just unhaul them, it don't matter as long as they get off the pile, you know? <laughs> so that's the main one is just read what I own, damn it. The other goal on my mind is I'd like to do at least four rereads in 2024. So feels attainable, literally one per quarter. <laughs> four rereads does not seem like that should be that outrageous. Last year, I think my goal for rereads was six and I think I did two or three rereads last year. So I just would like to make it a little bit more attainable, but still something that I could kind of push myself towards. So a couple of rereads. And the third goal is a goal that I had last year and made pretty much no attempt <laughs> towards it, which is to simply leave a minimum one sentence review on my story graph when I finish a book. Shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard. Right now, my habit when I finish a book is to immediately finish that book, open up story graph, enter my rating and mark it as read. And like, that's, that's it. And 
for the extra 15 seconds, I would love just for future me to leave one sentence. And I know that if I get into the habit of just leaving one sentence, eventually it will be easier to leave a paragraph or so about my thoughts. I'm just trying to like break the ice on leaving written reviews. Number four is to share three anticipated releases for this year. And th th there are so many releases coming this year that I am over the moon about. But number one on my top three is This Ravenous Fate by Booktube's own Pages of Haley, Haley Dennings. And I just, it is so amazing that Haley has a book coming out this year. Like that has not even, it has barely sunk into my brain that that the book that she's been talking about and working on the last several years is like, I will be able to go and purchase that. So wild. And I simply cannot wait. This Ravenous Fate is young adult historical dark fantasy with vampires set in the Harlem Renaissance. Enemies to lovers. Number one, number one is This Ravenous Fate. Number two is the third and final book in Rebecca Roanhorse's um, Black Sun series. What is the series? It doesn't say? Well, anyways, I, it doesn't even say on the first two books, so I don't know what the series title is, but the third book is called Mirrored, Mirrored Heavens. I am very excited about it, but a little bit anxious about it. The second book didn't quite meet my hopes and dreams, <laughs> but I just didn't feel like it had quite the punch that Black Sun did, but I'm hoping that it will be a sweeping, wonderful, genius conclusion to the series, <sighs> but I'm a little bit scared about it. So we'll we'll see. And then the third one that I'll mention is Alison Cochran has another sapphic romance coming out in the spring, maybe over the summer. I don't know if it's second chance romance or like friends to enemies to lover. It's like some trope, obviously. But I do know that it's a road trip and it deals a little bit with grief, like losing, losing like a parental figure, mentor figure. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Anything that Alison Cochran writes at this point, I will buy it. Pretty sure I will love it. So that one feels like a safe choice. <laughs> Next is which goals did you reach or not reach last year? And like almost all of them. I did not do so good on my goals last year. I don't even remember what well, most of them were. And I will not be going back and watching that video because I don't need to do that to myself. However, I know that one of my goals was to work on reading more of my series and sequels, which I, I did pretty good on my series and sequels last year. So that I think is probably the only goal I really made much headway on. And uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm happy not revisiting that. You know, that is, it's in the past. <laughs> Number six is new releases that you've heard of that you have no desire to read. And this is gonna sound like low hanging fruit, okay? But <laughs> as far as like me who's been living under a rock the last couple of months, I don't feel like I have much on my radar of things coming out next year that I don't wanna read. But I do know that um, Emily Henry has a new book coming out I don't know. I it just I, I don't feel like I'm a Emily Henry fangirl per se. So if it comes out and people are raving it, maybe I'll pick it up. Right now I really could care less. <laughs> Same goes for Tessa Bailey. I've read a few things from Tessa Bailey, have hated all of them. So I if you love her, great for you. I will be taking a pass on that one. Um the other one that I don't know. I don't know if I will care about or not. I think I'll probably re wait to see how it's received is Lee Bardugo has a new historical fantasy coming out next year. It sounds really cool, but I think it's adult and I feel like her adult series was not very well received or at least had very mixed reviews. The um, Ninth House and Hellbent, which was maybe just a duology. For some reason, I felt like that was a longer series, but I have not read those, her adult books. I was pretty iffy on what I read of the Grishaverse. I DNF'd the first series, which was Shadow and Bone. I think I made it halfway through the second book, couldn't do it anymore. Six of Crows was fine, Crooked Kingdom I did not like, and I haven't read the rest of the Grishaverse. 
I don't know. I really want to like Lee Bardugo. I want to be on the hype train. So we'll see. Uh, but you read it first and then let me know. I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. Number seven is what are some reading habits that you want to change this year? Uh, the big one, okay, the big obvious one is less scrolling on my phone and more physical reading because there are so many times where I just dissociate, right, and scroll on Instagram for an hour, two hours at a time, which is like, that is doing nothing for me. And I never feel good about it after the fact. It's like, nice, two hours on Instagram, love that I spent my night that way. That's never how I feel. So I would really like to work on that impulse of just immediately having a second of boredom, picking up my phone and opening the dopamine apps. I would much rather train my brain to just pick up my book for that hour instead. That's way easier said than done. Uh, and I do like Instagram. I like keeping tabs on Bookstagram so much, but it's a bit excessive right now in my daily screen time intake. So that is a switch that I'd like to break is that just I'd rather reach for my book instead of my phone if I know I just have an hour to kill. Another random habit is that I would like to get back in the habit of um, joining reading sprints or hosting reading sprints. That would be wild. A lot of the um, Patreons I'm in do patron only sprints that I never seem to make it to, but also public reading sprints. I would love to make it a point to get back on there. It's just such a good way for me to either work on something reading or otherwise, just these like productivity bursts are really nice to be broken up with then people that I like and enjoy as creators, as friends on the platform. So that is a, a goal that I'm gonna be working towards as well. Number eight is any adaptations that you're excited about coming this year. And I, not really, I'm really not much of a TV person. Usually it's Wes that's like, let's watch this together. And I'm like, cool, great. I'm just not really someone who knows much of what is coming adaptation wise, but two things for sure that I think we will get to this year is the new House of the Dragon season is coming this summer, which Wes and I are nearing the end of our Game of Thrones um, buddy read. We're reading the whole series. And then I think probably by the summer will be when we're finishing up, hopefully, um, Fire and Blood, which is the like prequel that House of the Dragon is based on. So, that would be awesome. Very excited about it. Love the first season. And the other one that I think would be fun for us is watching Percy Jackson together because Wes has said that that's one of his favorite series. I've never read them. <laughs> so maybe after we finish Game of Thrones, if I can get him to wait that long to watch the show is going to be the trick because he gets FOMO and doesn't like to be spoiled. <laughs> so... It's going to be interesting, but I would love to buddy read Percy Jackson with him because I think he'd really like to revisit the books and I would like to have read the books. And now knowing there is the TV show, I think will be really fun to be able to compare in real time. But other than those two things, which are kind of connected to buddy reading with my partner, I don't really have any other adaptations that I'm like thinking about. Number nine is your favorite bookish memory of last year. And there are several, but the two that come to mind is going to Michigan for Manda's wedding with a bunch of us other booktube gals, Amanda from Ginger Snaps Reads. Um, we all got a big Airbnb together and just had like a little booktube sleepover and then watch Manda get married. And it genuinely was like the best wedding I've ever been to. Great wedding, Manda strongly recommend having a small wedding with a bunch of your friends there. It was so fun. And we, we all cried. We all hung out. We all talked about books. It was a great, great time. And then another similar highlight hangout is um, Christine, Monique, and Steph coming up to my neck of the woods to celebrate my birthday with me, um, which they've now done a couple years in a row. And it's just so wild and makes me feel so loved. And we always have such a good time. And we just, it is like such chill hangout vibes, <laughs> genuinely. We just cruise around 
um, show them the sites, shop for some books, and call it a weekend. And I could not be happier. It's always so much fun. Okay, the very last question is, are there any carryovers from last year that you still plan on finishing this year? And I, I'm proud of myself that I only have two because uh, midway through last year, I ended up purging my currently reading shelf in Storygraph because it had just got way out of control. And I officially marked a bunch of them as DNF and I will surely go back to most of them whenever I'm actually ready to pick them up again. But it just got to be so ridiculous to have like 14, 15, 16 currently reading books when I hadn't touched most of them in like more than six months. So I digress. I really only have two other books that I'm currently reading right now <laughs> that I will plan to actually pick up and finish in the near future, which are, okay, I put them over here somewhere. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, when I'm telling you, nothing is organized in here except for kind of these three shelves. That I, That is for real, okay? It is chaos the rest of this room. But um, my only other two ca carryovers is Pod by Lillian Paul, um, which I started reading to do a Women's Prize for Fiction video that I crashed and burned on, but I really enjoyed this. I just accidentally stopped reading it midway through, probably about when I realized I was going to scrap the video. This is about dolphins um, from the point of view of dolphins and it has so many interesting things to say and it's making me realize that I really enjoy like the strangeness and perspective of non-human characters and I will definitely be finishing this just you know whenever the mood strikes. The other carryover which really is a carryover from like fall of 2022 is Romantic Outlaws which is a dual biography of Mary Shelley and her mother Mary Wollstonecraft um, I read most of this, yeah, about 75% of this um, with my Frankenstein vlog from that time, which is wild. That was like almost a year and a half ago. So I started this biography. I had really no intention of finishing it in that vlog because it is quite long and quite dense, but it's also just so fascinating and interesting. And I really want to have finished this. I was annotating this. Um, as I went along, there's just so many amazing, like, facts and stories and coincidences between this, like, mother-daughter who were both trailblazing writers of the time, even though they never really knew each other. And it, it, it is just thinking about it right now is making me want to, like, re-pick it up as we speak. So interesting. There's no real reason I ever put it down other than it is a dense biography but we will get through it. That's everything. That is the January book tag. Um, I'm really excited to keep making videos. I'm gonna shoot for, okay, low bar, low bar, but I'm gonna shoot for a monthly video, okay, which I think I can actually achieve, which is gonna make me not feel bad about myself. And then maybe we can up the goal from there. But I can confidently say <laughs> that I can get a video out a month. Okay, ideally, obviously more than that. Would love to be back to weekly, but I, we're not gonna overcommit is another goal of mine this year. Attainable, low bar goals for me in 2024. <laughs> Thank you, Jan, for making a fun tag. I always love doing this tag. And uh, it just really got me thinking, you know, about all of the books that I've read recently and how I haven't wrapped up any of them, any of them over the last year. So we have a lot of books to talk about when I get a second to sit down and talk about them. Anyways, I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Um, let me know if you have any particular goals for your reading or otherwise for 2024. And give your dog a big old hug for me. And I will see you very soon. <laughs> Love you, bye. <laughs>